Welcome to Casual Friday. We are doing a very laid back, just kind of like chatty, hang out with me video today. So I hope that sounds good to you. Um, we are of course going to be chatting about houseplants. So I thought it'd be fun to do like a, to find some mainstream popular websites that have houseplant articles and just to see what they're saying, see what they're suggesting, recommending as far as like the best, best houseplants or popular houseplants. Um, I want to try to find one that's like hard, which plants are the hardest to grow. I'm just curious of like, what the av what information the average person would find like i think that these types of articles and lists are more are most often stumbled upon by people who are just getting into plants or maybe people who aren't into plants at all but are trying to like find a gift for someone or something like that um and i am no houseplant expert but i have been in this hobby for several years now um, I have a lot of plants and I just feel like I'm seeing it through a different lens than, um, you know, the average person probably. So we're just going to look through some of them and chat. Um, I am very curious as to what we're going to find on here. I hope that you guys like this just kind of like relaxed kind of react video. I thought it'd be fun. I think this is the first time I've done a react video on this channel. I know I've done a few different ones on my Patreon. I've reacted to like my old videos and like my patrons plants, which is very fun, but I haven't done anything like this on here. So um let's just hop into it and when i say popular mainstream websites i mean like i'm just going off of the ones that show up in like the first few hits on google so um the first one that we are on is good housekeeping so very popular website the, uh, the article is the best indoor plants for every room in your house a mix of easy to care for air purifying and low light picks any houseplant beginner would love. So there's a few <laughs> red flags in that little description here. The first one is air purifying. And I find that a lot of, this is like a popular thing that people tend to run with when they're trying to like market houseplants or like, um, I don't know, capitalize on how the houseplant trend or houseplants, I guess. Um, I see this a lot in like this type of, I don't know, this type of article, I guess. And I know that obviously plants are air purifying and filter the air um, and they're very important for that. But these articles are usually referencing the a NASA study that was done um, that ranked like different plants and how much they filter the air and whatnot. And they kind of run with this but the truth of the matter is that it's so minimal like you would need so many plants in your house like thousands of plants for it to make any difference like i doubt that my home with 150 plants is any has any better air quality than like you know any other home that doesn't have plants so it's just it's like it's not a myth but they're just really reaching there and like overextending what the actual truth is as far as i know um, this is what I've heard. I could be wrong, but like that's my understanding. Um, and then they're saying low light picks, which is always like a little concerning because a lot of houseplants are marketed to be low light and people put them in like low or no light, like a dark corner or something, and they don't do well. A lot of these plants can uh, survive in low light, but they won't really like thrive or grow very well. So I don't know. It's just like, eh. but you know. Um, we're looking for the best plants, easy plants, so let's see what they have on the list that they're recommending to people. Okay, so the first one that they are recommending is the peace lily. And you know what? I actually like peace lilies, and I feel like they get a lot of hate. People don't like them. People call them airport plants or mall plants, but I actually think that they're quite beautiful. There's a lot of different varieties, which is really cool, like a lot of different like variegation types and stuff that you can pick from if you want like a more a more rare one. Um, but I think that even just like the green one is beautiful. I used to have a peace lily domino, which had beautiful variegation. It was so easy to care for. So I do think that this is a pretty good pick for them to have on here because 
yeah, my experience with them is that they're very hardy. They will definitely show you when they need to be watered. They will completely droop. Um, but, and like that in itself, I feel like that's like really important for people who aren't necessarily used to taking care of houseplants to like see like a visual cue like that. Um, of course, you usually want to water them before it gets to that point, but um, yeah, I think that they're great plants, honestly. Mine grew so big. When I moved here, I didn't take any big plants with me, so I sold it then, but yeah, I love that plant really. The next one that they're recommending is Monstera Deliciosa, obviously a staple. I feel like that plant is going to be on like every list. I remember when I first started getting its plants, the Monstera Deliciosa was like, I needed it. Like as soon as I like glimpsed the houseplant world at all, I was like, this is the plant. Like you don't even have houseplants unless you have Monstera Deliciosa. Um, I wanted one so badly and then eventually got one um, and yeah it was they are easy care plants but i will say that they're they're recommending this as a medium light plant and i would say that these enjoy bright light like at least bright indirect but they also can you know tolerate some sun and do really well in like a sunny spot as well and they'll grow larger leaves and get more fenestrations um so i don't know i definitely think it's more of a bright light plant Maybe that's just been my experience, but I've always found like the more light, the better for these Monster Deliciosa, um, especially this like large green guy right here. Good old spider plant. Um, they've really got all the staples. So this is best air purifying. So yeah, it's just kind of funny to me that they like market it that way. <laughs> But I think spider plants are great, honestly. I used to have so many, like I used to have a massive one. I used to have different smaller ones. I think they're so fun to grow. I feel like they give very like, I don't know, kind of retro vibes. Like I think that they look really cool um, in home decor and in a space. Uh, and they're really fun. They put off little babies. I feel like nobody, like I don't really see these around. I would grow one again one day, totally. I think that they're fun and they, they are super easy, but they do crisp. At the tips that's the only thing that's annoying about spider plants snake plants i'm getting a little bored with their list here now these are all just like very basic you know generic if you look on any list these plants will probably be on it so good housekeeping i don't know maybe spice it up a little bit um okay mini jade plant i didn't even know there was a mini one i i've only seen the regular one i think I don't think I would be drawn to this. I think I would just get the regular one. So I don't know. What else do they have on here? Money tree. I really like money trees actually. I would love to grow one one day. My mom used to have one and it was so cute the way that the little new growth would come in. Um, yeah, I really like them. Or even like a variegated one maybe I would go for. That would be very cool. Yeah, I've heard that they're easy. Asparagus fern, this is another one that I actually want to try. Um, it says keep this soil moist at all times. Is that true? That might not be the best plant for me then as an underwaterer. If you have one, leave a comment down below and let me know what your experience has been with it. I think that they're so cool. They give such a kind of like whimsical vibe. I really like the way that they look. Um, it's saying that this one is the best plant for kitchens specifically. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, let's kind of scroll through and see. They're saying the best indoor succulent is String of Hearts. See, this worries me a little bit. I don't know, just that they're saying like best indoor succulent. I feel like people are definitely going to be underwatering this. And y'all know, I, I am an advocate for watering your String of Hearts like almost the same as your tropicals, like the rest of your... They will just not do well if you underwater them. And then we have... Oh, they, this is a photo of a Monstera adansonii, but they are calling it just philodendron, <laughs> which is very interesting. Um, oh my goodness, most types of philodendron can tolerate dark corners and very little watering. <laughs> it hurts my planty soul to read stuff like that. No, they need bright light. They need bright light and they need, you know, reasonable watering. They like to be on the dry side. Oh my goodness. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's more off-putting about this. Is that uh, care advice or just philodendron and then a photo of a monstera at Insoniae? Um, that seems to be a really common thing. And like in big box stores too, like philodendron or monsteras will be labeled as philodendron. And yeah, I don't know. It's kind of strange. Like to me, I'm like these are like the difference is so obvious, but maybe to other people it's not so much. Um, anyways, what else do we have on here? Best indoor plant for offices. And they are recommending a Calathea ornata, which like, for me, when I think of offices, I think of something that would, you know, you want something that would require very minimal care. You're not always there. Maybe you're on vacation. Um, and a Calathea would just not be the plant that comes to mind um, because they need, like, you cannot miss out watering. They need regular watering. They need to be checked for pests. They're just not, not a minimal care plant. Um, so definitely wouldn't be my pick to recommend for an office. And then, okay, we're going downhill here, guys. They are recommending a rubber plant, Ficus elastica, for low light indoor plants. And my experience with ficus has been that they love light. I used to have my ficus uh, teneki, elastica teneki, right in my south facing window. It would get blasted by light and it loved it. Um, so I've always, like, I know that the, especially this burgundy one, this poor guy really gets marketed as being a low light plant, but I just don't think that's true. I think that they need a lot more light than that. Um, and I also don't think that they're easy plants. So yeah, but the light thing is annoying. Um, a lot of just like, yeah, nothing really crazy on the rest of the list. Okay, next we are going to look at the 20 most wanted rare houseplants because I'm really curious of what's going to be on like a rare houseplant edition of this kind of list. Um, and I will say that this is from 2022. Yeah, okay, so December 2022, so just a couple of months ago. And all these articles that I'm looking at are, I'm only going to look through ones that are like 20, at least 2022 because I want them to be, you know, relevant. So we are on a website called The Homey Space, looking at what they have listed for 20 most wanted rare houseplants. Um, okay. Oh, they have a little YouTube channel too. The first one, okay. The first one they have listed is Syngonium Podophyllum Red Spot. That is kind of unexpected. I don't know why, I just wasn't expecting to see, I, I thought the first one was gonna be like Monstera Albo or something more generic, but that's a fun little option. I do like the Syngonium Red Spot. I think that it's really pretty. I've never seen one in person before or anything, but um, I do think that it's pretty and they are pretty popular. So I don't know if they're like top 20 popular, but they're pretty popular. And yeah, I haven't had experience with one or anything, but that is a beautiful, Beautiful Syngonium. Um, next. Okay, so here we go. Um, Monstera Deliciosa Albo Variegata. Here's our Albo Monstera, of course. She has really held her spot for like years now as being one of the most top, you know, wanted rare plants. Um, so good for her. You know that I love Monstera Albo. And then we have, of course, her counterpart, the Thai Constellation. Although it looks like they have another photo of an elbow on here. So that's interesting. But I understand. Um, like, if you are someone who doesn't really know plants, then it, it, it is probably confusing to try to tell them apart. But to me, this looks like very obviously Monstera elbow. So yeah, that's kind of funny. Um, it does say this species requires a certain skill level to grow and grow very slowly. And I will agree with that. <laughs> okay, and then next we have Monstera Obliqua. I feel like she really had like her moment a few years ago, but they are becoming a lot more available now. So um, that's, you know, they are getting more popular because more people are kind of getting their hands on them, which is nice, but um, yeah. And then, okay, and then we have 
variegated monstera monkey leaf this is variegated monstera adansonii and i feel like this is kind of the same story as the obliqua like it was like a couple years ago that this really had its moment but now they're more popular prices have come down people are getting their hands on them which is amazing we have a lot of monstera on this list it seems now we are on monstera aurea which I I feel like this is a little bit of a more like recent, like more recent than the Albo at least. Um, it's more recently become like more popular and more in demand and more people are getting them. Mine is just putting out its first new leaf in my care, by the way. It's like just unfurling and I'm so impatient to see what the variegation is gonna look like. Um, but yeah, love Monstera Aurea. I think that it's amazing. Let's kind of scroll. Oh, Philodendron Mame, silver. I wouldn't expect to see that on like a top 20 list, but I mean, it is a nice plant besides its its um its relationship with spider mites. Milk confetti syngonium, I do think those are nice. White princess philodendron, interesting. I feel like that's kind of random. They are nice. Like some people have really nice specimen. Philodendron melanochrysum. Interesting. I feel like this plant has had a bit of a falling out. Like I feel like people just really uh, like more people are talking about how difficult they are and how they just like are so hard to size up and I feel like with these like rare plants like when people when we got our hands on these you know two or so years ago two or three years ago um, when you're buying a rare plant you so often just invest in like a small little baby plant and then grow it out but when you do that with this plant it just seems to be really difficult to size up so I feel like more people started talking about that and then these like fell out of popularity, but I do love the Melanochrysum, like the way it looks. I just, yeah, I don't have one anymore because I was not having luck with it, unfortunately. Gloriosum, love, Philodendron Gloriosum. Don't think I would really consider it rare. Um, and I'm using the term rare loosely in this video, obviously, because the plants that this list is classifying as rare are just like, you know plants that are maybe a little bit more difficult to find you can't find in your like local plant shops but I feel like the gloriosum is like bordering onto common now I feel like they're pretty easy to find queen anthurium it's fair enough I feel like everyone loves a good queen anthurium moment I don't know if I will ever have one because I do not have good luck with anthurium and I've heard that she is a bit picky but I do appreciate them albo syngonium love them feel like they you know a lot of the plants on this list are giving me like they should have been on the list like the four years ago edition of the list but <laughs> um philodendron golden dragon i don't really see these that much either but i do think that they're really cool i'm really like i really am getting into like different leaf shapes and like appreciating um the unique leaf shapes more is this an orchid oh we have an orchid on here magic witchcraft orchid this is very cool. Um, I've never seen this before, I don't think. It has flowers that are like almost black. I think that this is really cool. I feel like this is kind of random for this list, but I do think that that is really cool. So, okay. Um, let's see if there's anything else like interesting. Variegated Billy. Then now they're just suddenly throwing out like the super expensive plant. <laughs> I do think these are gorgeous. But... Oh, pink princess. We won't even get started. We won't even get started. I kind of want one. I kind of want to try one again because um, I'm, I'm in my pink era right now, but yeah, I don't know. Twisted cactus, another kind of random pick, but I do love these. It's one of my favorite cactus. I think they're so cool. And then they give you um, some care tips and stuff. Very interesting. It's kind of funny to look on these websites, you know. I wonder what it would be like to scroll through these with the perspective of like not really knowing anything about plants. Okay, and then the last one that I want to look through is I want to look at what is being said to be like the hardest house plants. I'm curious to know if I'll agree with them or what. Um, so we are now on Bob Villa tried true trustworthy home advice okay we're in the lawn and garden section um okay so the first one on the list is azalea which i guess is a type of rhododendron i've only known these as being like outdoor plants so interesting is this a house this is a house plant list right yeah 15 toughest house plants 
Um, okay, Azalea. I can imagine that they would not do well indoors because I feel like those are meant for outdoors, but moving along. Tratoscantia, really? I feel like this is like the easiest, like most prolific, fastest growing houseplant. So that's very interesting. Why are they saying it's hard? Da 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 da. It begins to, okay, the leaves get fewer and farther in between. An inch plant begins to look sickly even if it's thriving. Okay, so I guess that because they get leggy, um, the only way to keep the plant looking its best, pinch back the growing tips and do that over and over to keep pace with the plant who's grow. Okay, so they're basically saying that you need to like trim it a lot, I guess. Um, which I guess that would be considered like high maintenance, but I really don't think that this should be on the list for like one of the hardest house plants because if your only problem is that it's like growing too much or too fast, then I don't know. Boston fern, of course, classic. Ferns need a lot of water. Um, they will just like, I used to have a big fern. I don't know if it was a Boston, but it was like similar to that. And um, it was gorgeous. I loved it. And it was like not super hard, but it would crisp and drop leaves all the time. Like you're constantly vacuuming under that thing. I'd like to have another fern one day, just because I feel like I should have one. Miniature roses. Again, I feel like this is an outdoor plant. I don't know anything about that. Orchid. That's very general. <laughs> just orchid. Um, I've never tried to grow an orchid, but they do intimidate me, so it could be hard. Um, okay, largely because many folks who own them just don't know how to care for orchids. And I feel like that's what it is. Um, people, these are often like gifted to people and then they don't know how to care for them and then they don't do well. And that could be the case for like so many plants, right? If you don't know how to care for something, it's just not gonna thrive. Next on the list, we have the zebra plant, which I actually think that these are quite cute. These you can find at like grocery stores or plant shops really easily where I am. Um, but I have heard that these are very hard to grow. So I've never gotten one or tried to grow one before. I hear that they need a lot of water or else they will just crisp. So if you have one, leave a comment down below and let me know if that's been your experience. But um, yeah, I do think that they look cool. I've just heard that they're like very high maintenance. You really need to keep up with the watering. So yeah. Oh, it has very specific um, instructions here. Humidity, they say it wants to. Wow. Yeah, consistently moist soil, but that's a thing. That's a thing that scares me about this plant. Um, I don't think I'd be able to keep up with it. And then we have a banana plant. So I had one of these like when I was first getting into plants, like it was one of the like first plants that I got and it promptly died. I And I didn't know why, like I couldn't see pests on it. I don't know, it just like, it just lost all of its leaves and was drooping and yeah, it must have not gotten enough light or something, but yeah, it was not, not an easy plant for sure. Gardenia, seems to be another outdoor plant. Fiddle leaf fig, yes. Fiddle leaf fig is notorious for being a difficult plant to care for. I had so many problems with mine, like ficus in general. I just feel like ficus are like difficult plants, honestly. Um, especially fiddle leaf fig, spider mites. That's been a problem with like all my ficus, like ficus elastica, fiddle leaf fig, ficus audrey. Um, they don't like to be moved. They like a very consistent watering schedule. Um, they're just very picky. They need a lot of light. Yeah, they are hard, I will say. I do love them though, and I know that they've really fallen out of popularity and they're not like trendy anymore or whatever, but um, I, I still like them and I like the way that they look and I would grow one again one day. Like I love when people have one in their house that's been there for years and it's like growing all wild and like taking on the shape of, of the space. And yeah, I just think that they're really cool. So I would try one again one day, I would cheese plant. I hate when Monstera is called cheese or like Swiss cheese or like just why? Like can we not? Um, so they're just saying Monstera Deliciosa I guess. They have a picture of a Thai constellation so I, I can get behind that being a hard plant but just like a regular Monstera Deliciosa I don't think is hard or the Albo I don't think that's hard either just the Thai is tricky so 
Alocasia Amazonica. I don't see this plant that much anymore. This is the first alocasia that I ever grew and it actually did so well for me, you guys. So I had a really good time with this, even as a beginner. Um, so I don't know if I just got lucky or what, but yeah, I don't know. Goldfish plant. Okay, Columnia. I really want another Columnia. Um, there's different types. I had one that was similar to this. I think it was called the Dancing Dolphin Vine. It was kind of like fuzzy, like it wasn't this um, this uh, shiny type of leaf and the blooms were a little bit different, but it was so pretty and I loved the way it trailed. I don't know why I didn't keep a cutting from that. I totally should have. It was just gorgeous. Um, but I would love to try like another type of, or the, whatever one, either the same or like another type of columnia again one day because they're so pretty. I don't know why it's saying this one is hard because mine was so easy. It's saying humidity, water, bright and direct light, room temperature, miss the mark, this plant tends to get leggy, leaf drop and no flowers. Um, I didn't do anything special, honestly, and mine did well. So I don't know. Venus fly drop. That's like literally one of the hardest plants I've ever grown. If you do not have the conditions right, like, no, goodbye. It will be perishing on you. Prayer plant. I think that Marantas are easy, um, but I feel like a lot of that is because of my water quality. Like, I get a lot of comments of people saying like, oh, my Marantas crisping and like, I can, or you could, I can only give my Maranta distilled or filtered water. And um, I'm lucky here because I can water all my plants with tap water. Um, I did get a filter for my like faucet last year and I just wanted to experiment with that to see if it made any difference but honestly it didn't so I took it off recently actually because I just don't think it makes any difference um, because I don't know I'm just lucky with where I live we have really high quality water here I guess but so I think that that it could be like what makes these difficult for some people is if their water is causing the leaves to crisp. But other than that, I feel like they're pretty easy and pretty tolerant. Stromanthi, it's kind of similar, kind of similar to like a Calathea. I feel like they can be difficult. I had one perish due to spider mites years ago. It was infested. That and my Calathea white fusion were, no, goodbye. I do think that they're really pretty though, especially the trio star, it's gorgeous. And I guess that that is it for this one. It's really nice to do just like a chill kind of like chatty video every once in a while. So yeah, I hope that you had a good time as well. I guess I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm going to go make dinner. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment, like I said, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.